Beginning in 1955, American advisors began to be sent to the Republic of Vietnam to advise South Vietnamese troops on warfighting tactics against communist North Vietnam. U.S. advisors used a mix of recycled World War II and Korean War equipment, including field gear and weapons. The weapon being used by this advisor is an M1 carbine, a weapon issued to South Vietnamese forces as part of the Lend-Lease program. The idea of the advisor program was to prevent Vietnam from becoming wholly communist, as the U.S. government believed in the idea of domino theory. If a country fell communist, the U.S. believed that countries around it would soon follow. Without the backing of anti-communist forces, the U.S. believed that many third world countries would fall victim to the influence of the Soviets. Following the landing of Marines at Da Nang in 1965, the first major arrival of combat troops in Vietnam, a campaign of anti-guerrilla activity began in the area around the DMZ. This Marine wears the kit needed for a patrol, based around the OG-107 utility uniform. He wears M61 field gear and an M1941 haversack. He carries the M14 rifle chambered in 7.62 by 55 NATO, which was the shortest lived service rifle in American history. The landings at Da Nang marked the beginning of an increase in U.S. troops in Vietnam, setting the stage for the rest of the decade. This soldier of the 1st Battalion, 2nd Regiment, 1st Infantry Division is participating in Operation Junction City, which was aimed at eliminating the headquarters of VC activity in South Vietnam. By 1967, the Army in Vietnam had adopted much of its uniform to fit the environment and climate of the country. His kit consists of jungle boots, jungle fatigues, and a Mitchell pattern helmet cover. His gear is of the M56 variety, including ammo and canteen pouches, as well as a butt pack. He also wears a scarf made out of captured Viet Cong black pajama cloth, giving the unit the nickname of the Black Scarves. This soldier carries the M16, a select fire rifle chambered in 5.56. Following the surprise attacks of the NVA during the Tet celebrations of February 1968, this Marine of Alpha Company, 1st Battalion, 1st Marines prepares to fight his way through the enemy-occupied city of Wei. Despite being unprepared for urban combat, in addition to being outnumbered 100 to 1, the Marine successfully drove the NVA out of the city. This Marine wears jungle fatigues in addition to his M55 flag vest. Many Marines were still seen wearing World War II surplus helmet covers during the battle, and this original example bears graffiti from its service in Vietnam. The response of the Marines at Wei demonstrated great ability and versatility in the face of an unfamiliar environment and an overwhelming military force. During the vicious anti-war protests in response to the American presence in Vietnam, various stateside army units were activated to conduct anti-riot and crowd control operations in Washington, D.C. This National Guardsman's base uniform is the OG-107 set, along with basic M56 field gear. The helmet is marked to the 171st Military Police Battalion, and the gas mask and chemically treated M65 field jacket are worn to protect against tear gas being used against protesters. He also carries the antiquated M1 Garand rifle, which was often all National Guard units had to equip their soldiers. National Guard units were responsible for holding down the fort at home, which was often disrupted by civil unrest. This soldier of the 25th Infantry Division enjoys a brief reprieve from combat while watching the Bob Hope Christmas show. Entertainers sponsored by the USO provided much-needed entertainment to GIs missing the comforts of home. This soldier wears the jungle fatigue uniform, including the famed Tropic Lightning patch of the 25th Infantry Division. USO shows are often looked back upon fondly by Vietnam vets who are lucky enough to attend them. This Marine of 1st Battalion, 4th Marine Division is operating in and around the area of Mudder's Ridge on the DMZ early 1969. During this time, 1-4 distinguished itself during Operation Purple Martin in the fight to recapture Landing Zone Mac on Hill 484. This Marine wears the ERDL camouflage fatigue uniform under his field gear and flak jacket. On his Arvin rucksack, he has strung a sock filled with sea ration components, known as a sea rat sock. He also has a speed loader tucked into his helmet band. The actions of 1-4 are immortalized in Navy Cross recipient Carl Marlantis' novel Matterhorn. This F Company Ranger of the 75th Ranger Battalion, attached to the 25th Infantry Division, is seen here on a nighttime patrol on Nui Ba Den Mountain. LERPs, or Long Range Recon Patrol Teams, were the eyes and ears of the units they were assigned to, providing invaluable information at the divisional or field force level. This LERP wears the iconic Tiger Stripe pattern uniform, including an original boonie, which was a derivative of the French Lizard camouflage pattern. This LERP's gear is heavily catered towards ammunition and water, two of the most essential needs on patrol. He carries even more canteens on his pack. Lerps often painted their faces, which was a non-common occurrence for the average soldier in Vietnam. Lerps had a very difficult but important job in Vietnam, as they had to be resourceful, quiet, and quick. During Vietnam, the Central Intelligence Agency played a major role in the conflict, conducting covert operations all across Southeast Asia. 
Famously known as spooks, CIA operatives worked to combat communism in the region through covert means, including weapon smuggling, assassinations, and cross-border operations. The CIA operated an airline, called Air America, which was the agency's tool for distributing materials and personnel without detection. Spooks often wore a mix of civilian and military clothes, such as the ERDL jacket seen here. In the last years of the Vietnam War, this cavalryman of the 1st Cavalry Division participates in the repelling of the March 1972 NVA offensive. As the war progressed, soldiers began to more commonly drop equipment or uniforms that they saw as a burden, often choosing their own loadouts instead. This soldier wears a very minimalistic kit, consisting of a bandolier bra instead of M56 pouches and a lightweight rucksack. This soldier has also chosen to stash his jungle jacket in place of a t-shirt, something seen commonly during the late war period. The 1st Cav was one of the last major units to be demobilized, with the last soldiers leaving in June. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this type of content, please check out some of the other videos on my channel. And if you're a Vietnam vet, we'd love to hear some of your experiences down in the comments below. I'd also like to thank my buddy Mike for filming and providing a lot of gear for this video. See you guys next time.